Hello folks, welcome back to another video. I hope you are doing very, very well. First of all, I want to apologize for the lack of video last Friday. I'm trying my best to stick to a Tuesday, Friday schedule, but extenuating circumstances meant that I couldn't ride. I wasn't able to film anything at the barn and I just didn't have the time because I had a very hectic work week to put something together like I'm doing today. I've sat down and I've put together a video that I've wanted to do for a while and I think it'll be quite interesting. In my years of watching Equestrian YouTube, I haven't seen something quite like it. So the idea for today's video is to take old videos of me riding and compare them to new videos of me riding and kind of just analyze my position and look retrospectively on what I knew at the time versus what I know now and see how my riding has improved, how my understanding of things like equine biomechanics and equitation science have improved and also in some areas how my riding has regressed a little bit. So I've already edited all the clips together and the way that I've structured my kind of analysis analysis is I have the clips separated into trot, canter, jumping, and then I've got a couple of like hacking and trail riding clips. So if you're new here or for a little bit of context, my name is Caitlin. I'm 28 years old. I've been riding for 24 years now. I grew up on the east coast of Canada in the kind of hunter jumper world, specifically the hunters. And I didn't do much dressage at all until about 2017, 2018, when I started riding a mare who was primarily dressage. And then I stopped riding for a little bit when I moved here to Ottawa for my master's program. Started riding at the barn that I'm at now. And since then I've kind of been undergoing a re-education, shall we say, and learning the basics and the fundamentals of classical dressage, which has helped me a lot in every area of my riding. One of my main reasons for wanting to do this video is that I think a lot of people when they go to riding schools or they get into a lesson program that focuses on jumping, all of their lessons include jumping and they don't take lessons with a dressage or flat work coach, which I think can have a bit of a detrimental impact on their riding and their understanding of things like equine biomechanics, which results in the need or the, the perceived need for training aids like draw reins, side reins, you see horses going around in false frames. I thought that it might be interesting to set a baseline of the things that I want to work on in my writing and I think this video kind of encapsulates the best of what I hope my channel can be because it looks to the past where I've been but it also looks to the future where I want to go. So let's delve for lack of a better term into the archives for a look back on the past. So to set up a baseline, these clips of me on the lovely splash from 2015 really exhibit the main issues that I used to have. So I have a hollow back due to a chronic weak core. I still have the kind of heels down mentality, which causes my heels and legs to tilt forward, which kind of pushes my center of gravity back a bit. And my hands are low and wide, which if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know is still an ongoing issue, but I am getting better. So then we move on to clips of the lovely Genesee, who is my friend Lisa's other horse. And she was the first horse that I really started to learn how to get the connection, for lack of a better term. But I learned how to get it on her. Like I learned how to get her to go nicely rather than learning the actual mechanics of it. Knowing what I know now, I might want to see a little bit more energy from her hind end forward. We're going in a very lovely trot, but it's a little bit slow. At this point, I didn't really understand the importance of really pushing from behind, but she was a really fantastic horse for me to start to learn the basics on because she was so naturally balanced and such a beautiful fluid mover. Now, something I will say is that you can see a huge improvement in my leg, like my lower leg is much more stable. It still moves a little bit, which you can see really well here in these clips. So then we move on to the beautiful Madison, who was the kind of the first dressage based horse that I ever rode, a lovely OTTB mare. In these first clips, I really didn't understand the importance of impulsion from behind, so she's chopping along in a false frame. I still have a hollow back and my hands are low and wide, but again, the stability of my le lower legs has improved a lot. So I rode Madison for about a year and a half. These first clips are from 2017 and these ones are from 2018. And in these second clips, you can see the improvement in her stride and her relaxation in the cadence of my riding and in my hands. My elbows are a lot better and my hands are a lot more even. This was a few months before I moved to Ottawa 
and I felt like I was finally starting to grasp how to get her going correctly. Now something I think is really important to say is I always struggled to understand how to get a horse connected and I could learn how to do it on individual horses based on how they were trained but I didn't really understand the idea of inside leg to outside rein or the kind of mechanics behind it. So shortly after those clips of Madison, I moved to Ottawa and I spent about five months with no barn and then I ended up finding the barn that I'm at now. And my coach is an incredible classical dressage coach so she has a really great understanding and way of explaining the basics of dressage. And when I started riding there in early 2019, I really had to go back to basics because I had been so long without a regular coach. So this was 2019. I had been without a regular coach for five years. I had had sporadic lessons, but but I was in desperate need of a refresher and not even a refresher I was in desperate need of a kind of re-education because I had always done hunter jumper I had never really had proper dressage or flat work lessons and when I did have flat work lessons it was all more about the horse and working on things like pull work rather than my understanding of the fundamentals of classical dressage and the basics of classical dressage is just flat work so I, I personally now think it's really important for every rider to have a decent understanding because it really affects the way that our horses go and obviously the way that they go affects the way that they build muscle, affects their physicality, which can have an impact on their welfare. So throughout 2019, one of the main issues that I had to deal with was my hollow back, which meant a lot of reminders from my coach about kind of envisioning a string attached to the front of my pelvis that would lift it up because visualizing it that way and tilting my pelvis up made my back a little bit straighter and it forced me to engage my core. And just that took about a good eight months to really get to a point where it was improved. Now, if I try to sit the way that I used to, it physically hurts. So I was working on my riding and also starting to improve my understanding of classical dressage. And I felt like 2020 was really the turning point where I started to understand how to get a horse to connect. And by the end of the year, I was able to do it pretty well. So this clip was from mid summer of 2020. This was around the time that I started to really understand the scales of training, the importance of impulsion and inside leg to outside rain. This really lovely Hanoverian mare, Bala, was an awesome teacher for me because she was tricky to connect unless you did it exactly right. She had a, quite a short neck so she found it hard. And I think in terms of equitation, the biggest improvement here compared to the very first clip of me on Splash is the difference in my core and leg stability. Because I had fixed my hollow back, my whole center of gravity was a lot more stable. And I remember being very happy with my elbows in these clips of me riding the lovely Essie in the field. But if you watch my videos, you'll know that my elbows are still a work in progress. This clip here is from October of 2020. I was a part-time working student at the time. So I got to ride a lot of different horses, which helped me adapt my new skills and kind of understanding of the skills of training to different situations. I was really, really lucky to have the odd ride on my friend's recent George horse, Jem. Jem and I, he's a half brother to Angry Klimka's Franciscus, and he's by far the nicest dressage horse I've ever ridden. I think riding a schoolmaster like him really helped to kind of teach me what things should feel like so that I could then kind of try to translate that feeling to the younger horses that I was working with because one of the biggest parts of being a working student is learning how to work with young horses and that was definitely something that I did, especially with this mare. So this is lovely Dola and she's a KWPN Arab cross and she's actually the first horse that I ever fully started under saddle and the first one that I ever taught the connection to. And I think the consistency and the kind of willingness in her contact here is a testament to how much I had learned over the previous few years. So this was in 2021. I wasn't a working student anymore, but I was still riding her a lot. She was kind of my main ride for a couple of years. I also started working on sit trot. Gem is notoriously difficult to sit trot. And then we come ahead to this year. So these clips of me on Eve are from our test riding clinic back in October. And you can see how much better my equitation is. I'm happy with my core, my leg stability. I've gotten a very good lower leg. My elbows are still a work in progress. And I think sometimes when I have stirrups that are too short, sorry, too long, my toes can point down. 
Um, this just shows the kind of difference in the quality of my riding when I'm in a jump saddle. Um, like I said, my biggest point of pride is that I now have a lower leg that is very, very stable. It's kind of back to the level of stability that it was when I was jumping regularly. So now we are moving on to the canter and something that you will notice in these early clips. So this is Will. He was a gelding that I leased in 2013 and 2014. Um, is that I spend a lot of time in half seat and here I'm trying to sit but because my back is hollow I can't truly sit deep into the saddle and this was an issue that um, I had throughout the years. If I was able to sit a horse well it was because they had a really comfy canter. Then I started riding Genesee so this is two years after those first clips and because my riding was improving my seat got a lot better. I'm not gonna talk about the issues with hands and elbows because those are ongoing in trot and canter. Um, but you can see that because my lower leg is a bit more stable, my seat is a lot better. And in this clip of Madison, you can see that I'm not quite in a half seat, but this is me really trying to sit deep in the saddle. But because I didn't quite have my pelvis up in the way that I ride now with my core really engaged, because my core wasn't engaged, I just wasn't able to absorb the movement of the horse in a way that I can now. That being said, something that I still struggle with and one of the biggest things that I want to work on this year is my ability to sit the canter on different horses. So you can see here, this is the lovely Annabelle. This is from that same day as the earlier trot clips. I go from trying to sit a few strides to then going in a little bit of a half seat and it's just something that yeah I continue to struggle with. This clip of Jem I'm really trying to sit and he actually is quite he's bouncy but he's also really easy to sit to I don't know if that makes sense but riding him really really helped me to try to improve my seat a little bit. Same thing with Dola so Dola had quite a bouncy canter when she was like before she learned to connect and was quite unbalanced. So at the beginning she was hard, like her canter was hard to sit. But as we started to go along, um, her canter got easier and easier to sit and I learned how to, but you can see there, like my, there's still air between my bum and the saddle. And I know that it's natural, like I'm not gonna be able to perfectly sit every single canter, but it's one of my biggest insecurities, I guess, right now with my riding is, like my inability to properly sit the canter. I think it gets better and better as time goes on and there's some days where it's really good and some days where it's just absolute crap. And I feel like my ability to sit the canter is the area of my riding that has probably improved the least over the last few years. Like, don't get me wrong, I've certainly improved, but not nearly as much as I would hope. So these clips are kind of more recent ones just to show where I'm at. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me is I just need to do some more fitness outside of riding to really strengthen my core because I think the issue, some of the issues that I'm having with sitting the canter all come from just having a weak core and not being able to absorb that movement. But I will say when I go in a half seat now, my lower leg is very, very stable, which I am very proud of. Always have to find the good things too. So now we move on to the jumping and this is where things get interesting. Jumping is an area where I have a lot of ingrained knowledge and muscle memory, but I haven't taken a jump lesson since 2016. So all of the jumping that I've done in recent years has been on my own. I've taught three or four horses how to jump and all of my jumping has been very low. And in some ways I feel like my jumping technique has kind of regressed a little bit just because I haven't been in regular lessons in a very long time. But it's one of those things where because I grew up in the hunter jumper world, even though I didn't have that solid foundation and understanding about proper flat work, I did have a very good understanding and ability with jumping. When you spend that long doing something, it's not something that you lose, right? And it's also a bit of a complicated situation because you can't really compare riding technique 
when jumping established horses versus teaching babies and greenies to jump. And one way that I do feel like that learning all this flat work has impacted my jumping ability in a negative way is I feel like I don't release with my hands as much, but I also used to do what's called a hunter release, which is a little bit overboard. Elsewhere in the world, they call it overfolding. Oh, jeepers. Sorry about the change in light. But yeah, so it's a little complicated because am I actually not releasing enough or do I just feel like I'm not releasing enough because I spent so long releasing just a little bit too much? There's definitely instances where I get, caught, not that I get caught behind the motion, but I kind of pitch my body forward without releasing as much with my hands as I should. So that's something that I am working on. And Eve really helps with that because she is so sensitive to the contact that I really have to release. So these clips are me on my high school lease mare, Annabelle. And the other clips you're gonna see are Will, who I leased after her. Um, these clips are from like 2013 and 2014. And although I didn't have that foundation in flat work, I have, I developed a really good eye and soft hands over fences. And I feel like I was really positive and forward in my riding. Annabelle helped with that, but Will definitely really taught me to go rather than to sit and take a pull. Something I used to be really bad at with my Arab sheik was to chip in and that translated to Annabelle and it took a couple of years for me to get over that. But Will was such a more kind of forward going horse and he was more of a jumper type than a hunter type I think that he really gave me and he was so keen like he was so brave that he really gave me a lot of confidence when it came to my jumping and he was really the first time that I started doing more like jumper style turns and things like that but when I'm looking at these clips, I see really lovely soft hands, bent elbows, and a really nice release. I think when I was overfolding was more as a like a young teenager. Like here, I'm really happy with my leg, my hand, um, and yeah, he's just such a good boy. So this was like 2014, and then I stopped jumping for a while, and then this is 2016 when I was riding the lovely Genesee. And same thing here, this was the last time that I was in regular lessons, so it took me a while to build my confidence back up. And I think that's going to happen when I start doing more with Merlin too. It's just gonna take building that confidence back up. But you can see a really positive forward ride. This was when I started jumping a little bit higher. So the highest I ever jumped was about four feet, but this was Genesee's first time jumping, I think that was 3'3". Three, three. So now we move on to many years later, and this is Merlin. And I mean, baby horse, I'm leaving this in because it's just the reality. So I am notoriously hard on myself, and I know it's not really fair for me to compare my skills when I was jumping seasoned, experienced horses to now jumping babies. But there are some things equitation-wise like there where my body goes forward, but my hands don't. So that's definitely something I'm going to be working on this year. Something else that I need to do that is really obvious here that I've since actually fixed is because I've gotten used to riding with longer stirrups over the last few years, when I've jumped, I haven't had the proper kind of level of stability in my leg that I normally would if I had proper jumping length stirrups. You can see there that my heel really isn't down in the way that it should be and my leg isn't as stable. So I've since put my stirrups up here, you can see. Um, and these clips with Eva from December. And you can see I've, something I've gotten good at that I never used to be is slipping my reins. So I, even though my riding might not be as pretty by nature of me working with babies, I have, I still have really soft hands and I don't catch them in the mouth. So yeah, my main goals for myself with jumping this year will be to do some stuff that just builds up my confidence where I'm riding more forward and following my fold more with my hands. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, getting back to how I used to be. So the last area of riding that I want to mention very briefly is just hacking and trail riding. So growing up, I didn't have a lot of experience with trail riding or riding in a big open space like our hay field. So getting to a point like here where I can take a young green horse for a gallop has taken a lot of work and slowly building of confidence. Sometimes I get comments from people asking how I'm so confident bringing my young horse in the field and it's honestly just slow and steady time spent with a lot of different horses um, and that's definitely been 
an improvement. I don't know if necessarily in my riding, but my confidence over the last few years. So that is it for this video. I hope that you have enjoyed. It's a little bit different, but I have found it very useful and instructive for myself. So I'm happy I made it, even if no one watches it. I mentioned earlier in the video that I am notoriously my own worst critic. When I was jumping at my highest and at my kind of peak level, of jumping, I had such an inferiority complex and I thought that I was the worst rider in the world. And looking back on those times with retrospect, I've rewatched old videos of me in clinics with different coaches and me at shows. And I was actually a decent rider. There's always elements of your equitation and your riding that you want to work on and improve. And that's one of the best things about this sport is that the average equestrian will always have something to work on and improve. If it's not something to work on with your riding, it's something to improve your knowledge of equine welfare, or in my case right now, my knowledge of hoof health and hoof anatomy because that's my latest ADHD hyperfixation. So yes, doing this has given me some things to work on, but it's also been a weirdly therapeutic and confidence building exercise because especially in my flat work, since I've gained a better understanding of dressage and the kind of basic elements of proper flat work and proper schooling. I haven't really done something like this where I've looked back on old clips and compared obviously, because that's why I'm doing it. But it really made me realize how much my riding has improved, but also how much my knowledge base has improved to the point where I can now be the one to teach young horses. The fact that Merlin as a not even five-year-old is as balanced and well-schooled as he is makes me really proud because I am the only person who has done any training with him. Other people have ridden him, but all of the training has been done by me. And I think what I have been viewing as a regression in my jumping is just a natural side effect of the fact that I haven't been in regular jumping lessons for well, the last time would have been 2016. Looking forward to this year, I have a lot of work that I'm going to be doing on my own to work particularly on my canter seat and on my kind of elbows and hands for flat work. For jumping, I just want to like I said, keep building back my confidence and getting back to jumping regularly like I used to when I was a teenager. I'm gonna have some awesome opportunities to take Merlin off property a few times this summer for some jumping lessons with my friend and her young horse. So it will be nice to get back into some semi-regular jumping lessons, even if it's only once a month. I think it'll be a really good experience for both me and Merlin. I'm gonna be working on all of those things with my riding. Plus, I want to start to teach him some of the first level dressage movements of so some of the lateral movements, which I will do in lessons with my my coach and then jumping wise I would like to have him jumping courses of like two six by the end of the year which for a horse of his size is a perfectly appropriate height for a five-year-old and if I get the opportunity to take him to a schooling show or two I'll definitely jump on it but who knows and one last note before I end this video and it's a kind of a disclaimer that I shouldn't have to make but I know how the internet works and I think YouTube is a little bit different. If I were posting this on TikTok, I would definitely need a disclaimer. So this is me doing some self-critique and self-reflection of my riding over the years and looking for areas of improvement while also giving myself credit to how I've grown. But that doesn't mean that I'm looking for advice. I'm a very experienced equestrian. I have a lot of different pools of knowledge at my fingertips and I'm not looking for critique or advice from people on the internet who do not know me. This might seem harsh, but I don't know how to put it. I, if, if advice is offered, I'm not going to take it because I have people who know me who I'm working with. So with that out of the way, my camera battery is going to die. So that's my sign to shut up. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Don't forget to give your horse or pony a hug or a kiss the next time you see them. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe, comment down below, and hit the like button if you want to see more, and I will see you next time. Bye!